Triff Games 3 Stacks vs. The Pen God Triff Gaming. In the Battle of the Pen Gods, two of the best pendulum genius minds in the game. Perfect for you guys to learn in a mirror match, best of seven mirror match, to see who's the superior pendulum player. We're both playing 60 card variants and it's absolutely insane. If you love pendulums, you're going to want to watch this video, man. It's going to be insane. So he wins the die roll. He's playing Zephra Orcus. I'm playing Pure Pendulum. Uh, 60 cards. Not the version I've been showing you guys. It's another version that I came up with a while ago. We actually played a long time ago. And it's an amazing best of seven match that is going to go right down to the wire. You can't miss it, man. It's going to be amazing. So we're going to fast forward the whole way through because it's going to be seven games. So it's going to be very, very long. He's playing Zephyr, as you see. I'm not a fan of the Zephyr engine at, at all. I would only recommend Zephyr if you enjoy playing the Zephyr deck itself, like as a fun deck. But there's too many bricks. The way I look at it, if he plays... Well, I'm going to pause it one, one bit before we get into that Zephyr thing. He plays Planet Pathfinder, actually, which is funny. He plays Planet Pathfinder because he's uh, for Super Poly. He wants to get Zombie World. Or not Super Poly, sorry. He uses the target to get as an option Oracle of Zephyr or as an option to get Zombie World to stop himself from getting sphere moded. So it's an option, a thing that he uses. This actually was made before Nibiru, by the way. But it's still in a pendulum mirror to learn how to play. It's perfect for you guys to learn. So I did take a long time to upload this because uh, the commentary to get all the seven games. We played on different days. It took a long time, but it doesn't matter. We're going to keep going here. As you see, like the Orcus boards are insane that you could do. Uh, the issue that I have with Orcus is that it does brick sometimes, but under the new meta with Nibiru, etc., Orcas are very, very, very good. To, even when they Nibiru you, you can still Orcas combo a lot of the time, especially to play Dragon Ravine. So it's like, regardless of the situation, you can always Orcas combo. So we're gonna keep, he's gonna keep going, and look at this, he's like, Infinity Negates, he's gonna have Crescendo, Divine Strike, Longirsu, Seal, Vortex, Savage, Dragon, Jackal, like, and a card that's gonna come out, uh, like, and a card can come up from Seal if it could somehow. And Dengirsu, sorry, Dengirsu instead of Longirsu. I'm like, damn. How how is anyone gonna gonna clear that? How's anyone gonna clear that? You know, like uh, so. I'm like, you know what? If Dengirsu wasn't there, I could do something. I hate scooping, but the Dengirsu is huge against my deck because I have Garuda and Eccentric. So Eccentric will pop, Garuda pop, and the back row is the only issue. Then you can just deal with like the other cards, but. It's way too much. So I'm like, yo, pop, he's gonna protect it. I'm just, just telling him what I would have done, but I can't even pop because I told him, yo, protect it, I lose. So game one goes to Team King of Games. Now we're gonna go on to game two. Uh, hey, what can anyone do to that board? Nothing. So here, we both have our own ways to play around side cards. We both have our own ways to play around Super Poly and Sphere Mode. And if you guys do like the video, let me know. I would love to get... And three stacks, we're planning on making a, a, a deck together, a pendulum deck together. And uh, let me know if you guys want to see his deck profile for this. And also his updated pendulum deck profile. We would love to get him on the channel and he's very interested in doing so. So let us know if you guys want to see it. Alright, so game two here. That was my board before he down to wrestlers. I have the seal. I should not have summoned the purple poison. I was actually very rusty when I played this match. I didn't play a lot compared to how I've been playing now, like non-stop ever since the promos came out. Because I'm unbanned soon. So I've been testing non-stop. But this was just when I first getting started, so I did rusty plays like that, where he didn't have super poly, but purple poison gave him another target, another dark for super poly, so I shouldn't even summon that. So there's little stuff like that you gotta learn as the more and more you play, so just keep that in mind as you play, to learn to not do stuff like that. Like, you, I shouldn't even summon the poison. But anyways, he opens Dino Wrestler, it's fine. If he opens side cards, you have one, two, three, four, five, six interruptions coming out, and you're not gonna lose to that. You're gonna have Abductor Resolving too. And I'm gonna I bounce the Dino Wrestler. He uses its effect, and I was gonna I negated it, I believe got a free Persona from it. Negated it with Jackal. There's really not much he could do. He did open serve like a lot of these cards, but Drax is gonna end up negating the servant. Never negate the servant when it's summoned because he could always have extras. So he has Chrono, Zephyr, Gazer, Pencall, and it's totally fine. You're you're in a great situation right now. Uh, you want to save your negates when you absolutely need need to. You don't need to like hope to use it right away. He has a free card here to pop an interruption, which is definitely a really good card to pop, but I ended up negating it. He triggers chronograph on the destruction. He did his best to destroy what he could, but he went more on the gate more. Like, there's not much you could do in a pen mirror if all you see is Dino Wrestler. So it's 1 1 after this. Like, there's nothing you can do in the situation, but uh, pretty cool as you can see how, how to play around cards. Now we're going to go into game three, which we played game three in a different day. Uh, so it's like you see a bunch of stuff here. We we're playing admit, you know, admit one one. Now we're gonna go back to game three. So now this is officially game three. We're doing it live on his stream, and 
as you see, he opens really good. Shry, I had super poly, so I was super hype. I'm like, wow. But don't, I was super rusty. I made the biggest misplay ever. I want you guys to watch this and learn what he does to play around super. He play, he does lots of cool combos to play around super poly and to play, there's a card you see, Morphage Wrath. So he plays a lot of cards to play around super poly and sphere mode. So in the mirror, you need to see these cards or you lose. It's that simple. You see super poly, you see sphere mode, or you lose. It's that simple in a mirror. It's, it's actually how it is. If, they, if they're a good player, if they're a shit player, you don't need to see them. But we both have respect for each other, knowing that we're both really good at this game. So I, we both know you need to see them or, or lose. So I made a gigantic misplay. I had easy game. Easy game. So I should have, for one, put Draco Stallion in my extra deck. I did not. I have Starving Venom in there. So his board, he's going to go out of his way to put up Ibli, Animorphage, Sloth, Animorphage Draw. So this is where my mistake is. So because Ibli's on board, I on my draw phase, I cannot use Super Poly because Ibli's on board. So I cannot use it. I cannot uh, tribute monsters because Wrath is on board. So now it's totally fine. I'm just going to crash the Ibli and Super Poly, right? An issue with that is that I had no darks, uh, two darks on his board. If I had Draco Stalia, I was clearing this, clearing this, and clearing that. And I can't Super Poly also while slots on board. So my idea was simple. I should normal summon Dark Room and not use its effect. I also told him Drag going second Drag is the Super Poly target. So what I should do is normal summon Dark Room. Very simple. I, I shouldn't even, I don't know why I pen called even. Like such mistakes, there are rookie mistakes you should not do. In a situation like this, if your opponent got the spice, I know you had Divine Strike 2 and it's all good. Well, I don't know what the hell I was thinking pen calling. That was the worst mistake I've done in maybe my Yu-Gi-Oh career. Gigantic mistakes. I knew that shit was getting negated. For some reason, I was thinking I negated with Divine Strike or something. Just so I know what I got to deal with. Absolutely abysmal how stupid that was. And anyways, we're going to continue. I know I was super... I don't want him to know I have a Destrudo because the end goal is Destrudo. So I know I'm going to know what's in Dark Room and not use its effect. I knew that was my plan. I knew I was going to super poly after I clear it, but look, this is my situation. So normal summon, attack, and then here's what I should have done. Attack, Ibli, Phoenix. Next, activate super poly. After I crash with, uh, with Ibli, activate super poly to use dark worm and vortex. Or sorry, dark worm and nightmare to go into vortex. Or sorry, Dark Room Nightmare to go to Venom. Venom, negate Vortex, and just like that, he's done. And then Cerberus for the last interruption. And he'd have no follow-up, his whole board would be cleared, and I get the Yazi too. But for some strange reason, I just entered main phase two. And I used Pen Call before. I was so ashamed, I just ended the game. Like, you win game three. So you're going to make mistakes like that, and it's totally fine. The important thing to do is don't let that affect the rest of the match. So it's a learning curve for you guys to learn from my mistakes. That game 3 was mine, but I made gigantic misplays and lost. So, you're going to make misplays, especially if you're rusty and don't test a lot. I was so rusty, what a huge mistake. But again, you can't let that bother you for the rest of the match. So, as you see how fast I'm going in game 4, I'm like, yo, I know I made huge misplays game 3, like two of them, huge misplays. But game 4, I'm going to learn from my mistakes, pick myself up, and keep going, moving forward, and look up only, man. Move forward only, bro. Like, don't look back. So I'm, I go fast, I'm like, I'm not losing this game. I'm not losing this match. I'm not losing another game, period. So I went ham. I'm like, yo, you're going to feel the wrath now. So he, I put up, all oh, he has, he has Sphere Mode. It's okay. His version of playing through Sphere Mode is playing Wrath and Ibli, which is super cool, with Sloth. But my version of playing through Sphere Mode is having six negates. So he ends up Sphering Vortex, Jackal, and Demion. So you actually have four interruptions left. He has seven interruptions. Now he has to deal with, without a normal summon, he has to deal with Seal, Persona Dragon, Dragster, and Divine Strike. Which, how could you do? He had Pen Call Dark Room too. Very unfortunate. His hand's amazing. His hand's amazing. Pen Call Dark Room. I use Dragster to negate the Pen Call, and he ends up having the Dark Room. He attacks into the Seal. That's cool. I bounce. I get a Persona. Now I have a Persona and a Divine Strike left. He Pen Summons, but his, the rest of his hand couldn't do much. I Divine Strike to harmonize it. And now he has his Orcas combo. So I'm like, alright, that's, that's bad. He still has Orcas combo through 7 interruptions. So he did really good to clear what he could with Sphere Mode, but wasn't enough. Now my turn, I just win. I, as you see, you don't lose because of Sphere Mode or Super Poly. You still win. So that's it's 2-2 two -two now. I'm like, I don't care. I'm not going to make the same mistake I just did. No more misplays. If I see it again, I'm not going to screw up. And then I don't see, I didn't open Sphere Mode or something or Super Poly. I'm like, it's okay. I'm going to draw into it. 
And do whatever, you play 10 draw cards in the deck. So he's going to put it on the same board. You're going to put it on the same. It's 2-2 two, two right now. In the Pen God Mirror. Triff versus 3 stacks. But I refuse to lose. You lose some die rolls. You win some die rolls. That's fine. That's not an excuse to lose. You build a deck to win first and second. So there's no excuses there. Uh, I should have won game 3 with my own misplays. But it's the only person to blame for that is yourself. So after that I told myself I got to test more. So that loss helped me a lot. Because after that, I tested nonstop. After the, like, the next three weeks, I tested nonstop. And now led me to be the great player I am now, today. Which is infinity times better than I was three weeks ago. When the duel happened. So the losses, you never lose. You never you learn from all, all mistakes. Now, similar situation. He, has, he gave me Ibli. I know you're going to super poly, but I'm like, you know what? That's okay. Because he gave me Ibli and because he gave me Wrath. And he's going to get slothed out as well. So all I got to deal with is a sloth. A Divine Strike and a Demon and a Vortex while not being able to, while dealing with my own Ibli. So five, four and a half interruptions. That's fine. That's totally fine. I'm cool with that. I should have put the Servant first. I don't know why I didn't. But it's okay. I, I know why. Sorry, I know why I didn't. I, I might have to Normal Summon it and then eventually Mastery after. And I thought, I didn't want to know, I wanted to wait in case I drew something nice. So now I'm going to Normal Summon I'm like, okay, uh, maybe I draw something with uh, Sphere Mode Desires, but I'm not taking the chance there. And he'll negate, negate it, obviously. So now I'm going to do something better. I'm just going to cr attack. Crash Ibli. And now all i got to deal with is Vortex, Divine Strike, and Demion. And I have five good cards in my hand. So things are looking good here. I mastery. I'm like, I'm in a great position here. I should not lose. I'm in a great position. Uh, so I go Servant. Pen Call. Of course Pen Call is going to get negated. And that was the plan. Now I have Destrudo. I want Shrine to resolve a Dark Worm. I want Destrudo to come out and get uh, and go Yazi, and I, I think here's what's gonna happen now. So I go Yazi. He's gonna yep. So I'm gonna go Destrudo. Destrudo Servant Yazi. He's gonna pop. Now I don't know if it ends up resolving or not actually, but I end up losing anyways. Hint hint. I had the Super Poly, and now there. This was my mistake. Uh, I should have Super Poly, but I had Into the Void. And I didn't realize that Desires is going to end up going to the graveyard. And I, that's why I didn't Desires. go well, I was getting negated. Because still had an Endymion. And because I entered my battle phase, I couldn't clear the rest of his board. So just like that, I wouldn't call it a misplay. I just couldn't do anything afterwards. So I didn't set up my Dragon Claw. I didn't know about the Dragon Claw combo at this point. So like, you live and learn. I'm like, I lost this one. But again, I don't want to scoop just yet. I'm like, maybe I can do something. Uh, but Super Poly something maybe. But the Sloth didn't let me Super Poly. At the next turn, and I couldn't do anything. The server was going to resolve, but he bounced it. Uh, it's totally fine. It's It was a great game. I couldn't do anything there. Now we're going on to the next one. This is now game seven. Uh, sorry, game six. At this point, uh, Servant was... Le or you could use Servant twice if you wanted to go Ash at this time. It wasn't like that before. Uh, like, sorry, now you cannot. But like right, right now, you cannot use Servant twice in the scale if it gets Ash or Ogre. But at the time, you could. It wasn't ruled yet that you couldn't. And here, you look at his hand. He's super poly. And it doesn't matter. Like, you, you gotta prep, like, you know what? I don't care what this guy has in, my hand, in his hand. You gotta put up as many negates as you possibly can. So, as you see here, I'm putting up as many negates as possible. This time, no Endymion, but, which is fine. Sometimes you can't set up Endymion and Zephyr, which is totally cool. But you're gonna put, as, put up as many negates as possible. You have three cards in hand, and you have full board. And he's super polys. I'm like, damn it. It's unfortunate. But guess what? Doesn't matter. Guess what? In life, you're gonna have stuff like that happen. Game six, game six right now. If I lose, I, I lose the whole match. I'm facing the biggest adversity ever in my career. I lost to Tayfun. I can't. Re I refuse to lose again. So I ended up in this whole other level of Ultra Instinct, saying I'm not going to lose no matter what. I thought instantly, Divine Strike, get rid of this. I've sealed Persona Dragster, uh, negating any draw card. Dragster negate. I'm like, I don't want to see it. Get him, see, get him to have like another fucking Supreme War, another Super. I'm like, fuck that. What else can he do with the rest of his hand? Negate that. I'm like, keep going, bro. Keep going. I have sealed two cards up for his three. You're going to win. You have two cards up for three. Negate everything. I'm negating everything I see. Like, I'm negating everything I see. I have three cards for his four. Uh, what's he going to do with two cards for Pendulum? He can't play. Negate everything. I don't care. You use every other effect, negate. Like, I'm negating everything. I don't care what he has. I'm negating absolutely everything. Now, the issue of Persona, he has to enter his battle phase. I might have should have brought Destruo, maybe. But, no. Nah. He contributes... He gets a Jackal, he's gonna gate on my turn, through my six interruptions with the Super Poly. I'm like, okay, he clears the Dragster, I'm okay. Now, I still have three cards in hand. I'm not gonna lose. 
I slept three cards in hand. I'm doctor, out of centric, eccentric, pop. I'm like, yo, I'm not losing. I'm not losing. I maybe got super played. I maybe got sphere moded. I maybe lost the game game through through misplays. I'm not losing. I'm not losing. And through all the adversity, I win the game six. Now we're going on to game seven. So game seven, game seven, where it all matters. I lost the die roll. I made a misplay game three. I got severe mortar. I got super poly. Is that an excuse? No, there's no excuses. There's no excuses. I look at my hand. No draw card. No, no super poly. No, lo, no severe mortar. Things are looking bad. But I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care what board he puts up. I don't care if he puts up the full eight negate board and I don't open a severe or super poly. I'm going to win. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to win no matter the circumstances. I'm hyped. Look at this. I'm hyped, baby. Let's go. I'm hyped. I'm not losing. I'm not losing. No matter what, I'm not losing. Now, he ends up uh, summoning all these cards out. He summons out the sloth. So his hand wasn't as good as it was before. He ended up hard drawing the sloth and pendulum summoned it. You really wanting it to be on the field there. I don't think I would have done that. I would have maybe summoned it out with LP from your hand. Because then you could do more stuff. But he felt... That you'd be protected from the Jackal of the Sloth, and if this got destroyed, the Divine Strike, and I still, you still can't severe mode, or severe mode me. All right, that's what he was thinking. But I'm like, you know what? If this is all he's going to do, I'm going to destroy that. That's all he put up. I'm like, I told you I'm not losing. I told you I'm not losing. Yeah, I lost the die roll. Yeah, in the mirror, I lost the die roll. Yeah, game three, I misplayed when I had game. Yeah, I got severe mode in a game. Yeah, I got a super poly in a game. There's no excuse to lose. That is no excuse to lose. I don't care if you had the full board, I was winning. If this board clears the four negates he has with the Ibli and Wrath, that still, this clears that too, even if he had a good hand. So now I'm like, little by little, I'm going to destroy everything. I already know what my plan is. I'm going to only summon from my hand and then summon the Demian and clear everything. So my plan now is I'm going to negate, I'm going to get the Jackal out, I'm going to use Cerberus to get rid of it, and then I'm going to trigger Chrono Jackal everything and get Demian to resolve, no matter what. No matter, God is with me, bro. God is with me. This hand is amazing against Sloth. Like, it just, uh, pendulums are great against Sloth. You just pendulum something in your whole hand, bro. It is a bunch of big monsters. Then he ends up, has to negate it. And then Endymion, banish everything. What can he do? He can't do anything. It just gets rid of everything. You can't negate the Endymion. It's a spell effect. Nothing can negate it. I clear his whole board with the Endymion. People sleep on just how good Endymion is. And I have a surefire game at this point. Surefire game. That's what you do. You just never give up. You top your double for the sauce. You never give up and you win. I faced all the adversity you could possibly imagine in this match. I didn't play in a long time. I was rusty. You could tell for the first few games, I was, first game I was rusty. First game going second. Going first, everyone could play going first. Going second, the first two games I was going second, I was rusty. And then I, I came into my own. I'm like, I'm not losing. That's what you guys got to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Shout out to Three Stacks for this video, for this match. It was an amazing match. We're going to be doing a whole video together on the best, most ultimate, amazing Pendulum deck you could ever see. And if you want to see his deck profile with, and his reasoning uh, in a Skype video, how why he played Ibli and, and Wrath and how they work to stop the cards for those who don't know, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget that. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.